Hey guys, thanks for checking out this clip on the web show. It's been so much fun in the past traveling around and doing interviews with all kinds of people around the globe. And you never know when a great story is going to pop up, especially on social networks. So on Facebook, I saw this incredible clip and shared it. And this is what I found. It wasn't until after I lost my eyesight that I wasn't afraid to fail anymore. The first step in my art career was going blind, and I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. Yeah, so that was it, the inspiring story of John Bramblett. And I jumped on his website to have a look around and saw some of the paintings and his background, and then an awesome documentary um, that was made about his life at the beginning of the journey, and here's part of that. My sight went very slowly at first. I, I didn't even realize it when, it when I first noticed I was having trouble with my sight. Um, I, I was already really twice over the legal limit for being blind. There were just less and less things I could do. I couldn't go out as much, or if I did, I needed assistance. There were just so many things I couldn't do. I just had a lot of anger building up. And I didn't even realize, I didn't even realize I was that angry, but I um, started painting, I don't know, so much as an outlet or a way of defiance in a way. You know, something that, that is viewed as very visual. After a while, I, I, I started becoming less and less angry. The more I painted, the more you know, I, I could let that out, and to where, to where now, it, it just, you know, I have to paint. Yeah, so there you go. If you go onto the website there, you'll find the documentary. It's so worth watching, and the artwork, unbelievable to check out. Just uh, so bright and vivid, and that's one of my favorite pics right there. So it was great to swap some emails and then organize a chat on Skype. And uh, thanks to the wonder of technology, we filmed a quick chat, and here he is. There you are. There you are. Oh, okay. Looking very cool. Oh, really? Well, thanks. <laughs> Mate, I'm so inspired by your story because it's one of those things with social media now where you, you can be in anywhere, any country and, and online and someone posts a link and you click on it and within 90 seconds you're wondering how that amazing story sort of came to be. And, and that's what I felt when I watched yours. Oh, well, thank you for saying it's amazing. Well, <laughs> your, artwork is, your artwork is incredible and your story I'm, I'm fascinated by. So, I mean, you've probably talked about it in the documentary, but in general, like, when, how, did, how did painting come into your life? Oh, man, um, I've done artwork ever since I was little. And I, I, I had a lot of health problems when I was growing up. And I had a, had a kidney out by the time I was seven. Um, I, had, I had my first seizure when I was two and then that developed into very severe epilepsy but growing up I always had artwork that, that helped me through that like it turned out art, artwork was a really great way to deal with, with the problems in your life with a bad day but it was also a really great way to celebrate a good day so whether it was a good day or a bad day art always worked out it was always good and uh, sorry that's my phone app Chewbacca my phone <laughs> apparently okay. I do a lot of work with kids and museums I, I go to schools and um, so whenever Chewbacca rings at her, the kids get really excited. So yeah. I'm sorry, sorry about that. That's okay, man. I'm going to try to put this away from the... Okay, I, I try to stick that away. I'm in my studio right now, so it's all a mess in here. Nice. Um, but, um, no, it just... but it, it So it was always a natural sort of way for me to, to, to deal with things, good things and bad things. But I didn't start painting until I lost my eyesight, but I drew my entire life. All my life I've drawn, I took every class I could get, you know, about um, how to use charcoal and pencils, how to draft, how to do anything. So, like, I would draw the blueprints for houses, for the engines, uh, you know, everything, but I never thought I'd be a good painter, and since I didn't think I would be a good painter, I didn't have the courage to try <laughs> to do something I wouldn't be good at, so I, I didn't do it until I lost my eyesight, and then 
I was afraid that I would forget what color looked like, which sounds crazy, but I just wanted to get my hands on color, and that's what started the painting. I started working out ways to be able to draw through touch. And, uh, and how old were you so when I'm you... sorry, I ramble. I no, no, man. It's, it's amazing. How old were you when, you when you started to paint then? Like, when did that... Oh, Lord, let me think. Um, I'm so bad with time and dates. Um, I know I started in college, but I... Um, I lost my eyesight in college, and um, gosh, so I, I'm not sure, but I, I was in college. Right. Um, and but I kept it a secret from people. I didn't tell people that I painted because I was blind when I started, and I thought, you know, this this is the last straw. You know, they're 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 definitely going to think you're crazy if they didn't think so before. Right. So I didn't tell people that I was painting because it just sounded it just sounded like a crazy sort of ridiculous thing to do, and I. But I um I just needed to get art back in my life and Do you remember the first painting that you did? Yeah. What you know, was it about? Drawing, well, you know, the hardest thing was drawing because I, I used to draw with pencils and charcoal and things. Yeah. And those are great, but you can't touch them, you can't feel them. So um there could be the most amazing charcoal drawing in the world and I can't touch it. It just feels like a piece of paper. So I started working on ways that I could use lines that were raised, so I could draw with raised lines, and, um, and it all came from me learning how to use the cane, like a white cane, right. how to get around using non-visual techniques, and now being blind is different than it was in the past, like there's so much more out there, it's just incredible. So I was learning all, all these new things that are out. It's just this, this new technology, these new these new methods for a blind person to be able to navigate the world, to be able to get around. And I thought, well, you know, if I can, after about a year, I thought, you know, if, if I can get around my town now, if I can get from my apartment to get to the class that I need to on the university, yeah. and not get hit by a car or not knock over too many people or, or <laughs> do anything embarrassing like that, then... Surely I could get across a canvas. I, I could start making lines that I could touch and feel using these same techniques. And that's what started it. And I, so I just started experimenting with different materials, trying to make lines that I could touch and I could feel. And and I wanted to get into color, so I started working on ways to make color feel different so that red would feel different than blue and blue would feel different than you know any other color so that I could touch the paint and understand what it was just, just by the texture. And that's what it started from and it was just it was all very simple but exciting and um and that's what it still is. You know, years later now I'm every day I'm still experimenting. That's the main thing. Um in my studio I'm surrounded by different paints and different things that I'm always experimenting with. We just put in a three D printer. So now I can take a photograph from someone from anywhere in the world and I can actually print their face out and, um, wow. and feel their face and understand what they look like and the world is just an incredible. It's just an, an amazing what's coming out here. You know, every day it seems like there's a new advance, a new idea. I think a lot of us take things for granted. We certainly take our sight for granted. We take the use of our limbs for granted most of the time, and we t we take for granted our health. Have Have you found that with with what's happened to you, you seem to have such a like warm, positive spirit? Was there ever a time where it was kind of like the opposite of that? Oh man, um, the first year that my sight went. I was so depressed and I was so angry. In fact, I was so angry, I didn't even realize I was angry. Like, I was that angry. Wow. I, was so, I went beyond the realization. And But I don't think people on the outside knew it. I, I, I thought, because I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing. I, I, I stayed in school. I um, I was learning Braille, which is, you know, the raised dot, so that if you're visually impaired, that's, that's the way you, you read. Yeah. I was learning how to do that. I was learning how to use the white cane. Um, I was learning everything. The new computer software everything that we have now so i thought hey you know you're going to be a great blind person you're learning all of this stuff you're doing everything that they're they're telling you but it, inside though i was just churning i was just you know so angry at, at losing my sight because i was a very visual person i you know i had drawn all my life and i just revered art i loved art and and that was just taken away from me and um but it was getting it. It was getting back into art. I, I I drew every day of my life up until I lost my eyesight because it was my way of dealing with things. It was just a natural sort of thing. Like drawing clicks in my brain for some reason. It just makes sense. And I drew every day of my life until I lost my eyesight. And then for a year, I, I didn't do anything. It didn't even occur to me to try. But when I started trying to learn how to draw again using the raised lines, it took about six months or maybe eight months. And I um. 
started feeling calmer, and I didn't even realize what it was at first. I thought I was getting, I had the flu or something. I thought I was getting sick because <laughs> I suddenly felt really different. And I thought, what is this? And I thought, oh, you know, you're 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 calm. You're kind of happy. I never thought I would feel happy again, and I started feeling this, and it started coming in, and. It was the artwork. You know, whenever you're painting, you're only thinking about the paint that's on the end of your brush. You're not thinking about anything you've lost. You're not, you're not worried about the future. You're in the moment. And it forces you in the moment in a way that few things do. And I would paint eight hours a day, 16 hours a day, 14, you know, whatever hours I could, That's I painted. And I still do that. And that becomes a habit of being stuck in the moment so that when I leave the, the easel, and, and I'm around my family, I'm around friends, I'm around people. I, I can I appreciate the moment that I'm in. I'm not thinking about another moment. I'm, you know, so it has a way of calming you down a little bit. Which, that's which that's incredible wisdom, man. And, and I guess I, to ask you, I mean, do you feel like it's a blessing in disguise? What's happened to you then? Oh, that's a really good question. You know, um, you know, if I if I could get my vision back, I would. I mean, I, I think that every way that you can experience the world. You know, you need to grab onto it, and every experience that you they, that that you can get, you should appreciate it and grab it. So, if I could get it back, I would, of course. But if getting it back meant that I lost all all the memories, all the lessons that I've learned since I lost my eyesight, it wouldn't be a hard decision. I, I wouldn't do it. I, I it, you know, it's, it's there. There's no way. I've I've learned so much about myself, about people around me. Um. So if, if I could get it back, yeah, I would. But if it meant that I lost all those lessons, it's not a hard decision. I, I wouldn't do it in a, at all. Yeah, such an amazing guy and uh, so much fun to Google his name and find some incredible clips online, including this one. Because I'm a visually impaired artist, I'm a blind artist, I don't see color. I can't see color, shape, form, shadow, any of that. So color to me is symbolic. It's feeling, it's emotion. When I hear music, though, I see color in my mind. Yeah, every note, every tone, I see it. I try to capture that in, in a canvas. But for me, color is more. When I was sighted, I was a very lazy sort of seer. Whatever light happened to bounce off an object, if it then enter my eye, and whatever color it happened to be, that's what color it was to me. Now it's very different. Color is how you feel about something. It's the emotion of something. It's the sound. It's the people around you. It's so much more than just light merely bouncing off of an object and going into your eyes. The more I paint, the happier I get. And I've been trying to make the paints reflect that. Colors to me are a lot more than just light reflecting off an object. And in fact, like in this painting, in quite a few of my paintings, there's actually hidden colors. Colors that sighted people can't see. I wanted to give sighted people that same gift of color being pure symbolism. So I'm going to step out of the way and we'll see. What I use whenever I paint, I, I, I paint in many layers of paint. And in some of the layers on this painting, I try to capture the music, the feeling, and, um, and what is, to, for most people, invisible color until you um, add a UV light source. So let me step out of the way and we'll actually turn off the regular lights and we'll bring up a, a UV light source. So as you can see things change quite a bit. Color is emotion, it's feeling, it's energy. For me, color is pure energy. And it's more than this light being reflected off an object. Well, I'm talking to you from the Gold Coast in Australia, and I'm wondering, where are you at the moment? I'm in Dallas. Well, I'm just north of Dallas, t t Texas. Okay. Um, the weather here is really nice. It's gotten cool. It's been <laughs> hot. It's been so hot, and now it's nice and cool. What's the weather like there? It's uh, yeah, it's coming into our summer, so it's just getting nice and hot. Oh, there, there we go. So yeah. we're just getting out of the heat. You're, you're, you're just about to get it. I, 
I've always wanted to go to Australia. Oh, you got to come. Like, I feel like t Texas, where I live, it's like a mini Australia. So I've always wanted to go to the real Australia, <laughs> to the to the real deal. Like the, well, that's just giving me that's, that's yeah, just giving me an idea. So let, let's try and get you to Australia. But the thing is. Um, how long would it take you to do a painting? If someone, like you said, can send you a 3D image, how, how quickly could you do a painting? Well, you know, it depends. It depends on the size of the painting. And if it's a portrait, it takes a little bit longer. But although I do live paintings where I'm, I'm going to Virginia in, in a couple of days. I travel about every two weeks. I go somewhere. I work with a lot of nonprofits and a lot of char charities. Yeah. And I'm going to help a, a charity in, in Virginia in a few days. And I'll do a live painting at, um, at, a, at, a, at this event, and um, and it's only going to be a couple hours. We'll have a symphony they're playing. I'll do a painting, and they'll, they'll auction it off at the end of it. Because that's what I was thinking. If we if we got you to come over here to Australia and we got you on one of like the, the TV breakfast shows, like the Today Show, you'd be able to start a painting at 6 o'clock, and by the end of the show, there'd be something pretty much there, right, in three hours? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, that would be a cool yeah, idea. Would, 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 would you go on the show with me? <laughs> I'll flick him an email and see if we can get you on there. Okay, well, if, you, if you'll go on with me, it's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, look, it's been great to talk to you on Skype. I, I think you're an incredibly inspiring guy, and uh, I, your artwork is incredible, and, you know, congratulations, and thank you for all the hard work you do and all that passion, because we get to share the end result, which is the beautiful art. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. I, I never thought anybody would see a painting of mine, and for you to say that, it means so much to me. All right, man. I, I appreciate that. Thanks, thanks, thanks for reaching out. Good to talk to you, and uh, hopefully I'll meet you in the flesh soon. We'll get you on the Today Show in Australia. Man, I'd love that. All right. Hopefully I'll see you soon. All right, buddy. See you, mate. Good night. Yeah, so there he is on Skype, and great to talk to him, uh, John Bramblett. You can check out all his art online. I'm going to send an email to the Today Show and see if we can get him here. But uh, thanks for watching the interview.